Hello. Hi. How old are you? Thirty one. Okay, so why are you why do you support this bad bitch boss chick energy? Well, one from past experiences and I've noted with adopting I adopt a boss mentality where I'm an entrepreneur, I'm building three businesses in the vertical and I noticed a lot of the guys that I've dated in my past don't match up to what I'm doing in life and I this one side What industry are you in? I'm sorry? What's your industry? Renewable energy. And so, so is it multi level marketing? Uh, I set up the platform that yeah. So when you say you have three businesses, are yep. they all MLMs? No. One is um just solar for residential and commercial. Then we sell our technology software, um CRM for businesses. Mm -hmm. Capital. When you look around these businesses, do you see them to be dominated by minorities? No, I'm the only black person and a woman. Okay, so because there's so uh, when people say entrepreneur, this is why I don't just use the word entrepreneur. Entrepreneur can mean almost anything. Yeah. And I'm finding that we have so many entrepreneurs under thirty with no track record of success. They don't even have five years of track record. So. I don't know what it means. That's my thing. You say you got three businesses. Did you go to college? Yes, I did. Uh, did you finish? No. It doesn't matter. I'm just asking. No. Okay. Uh, so you have three businesses, and you say you find it hard for guys to, to meet guys on your level? Is that what I heard? Yes. What does that mean? Well, I'm having trouble finding a guy who can actually keep up with my pace as far as work ethic. I'm running into guys that have too much time, and I really do. Do you have any children? No. Okay. Uh, what you, okay. Guys who can't keep up, are these guys employed? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they are. Some are black market and then I find some on the black market <laughs> is that what you said yeah and the the drug business I guess if you want to yeah, as more as I do these focus groups the more I sit down with black women the more I'm starting to hear that y'all really don't y'all would date a corporate banker and a drug dealer or scammer just the same it makes no sense to me they're all entrepreneurs. It just don't. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. Yeah, but it's bullshit. Because when I sit down with other races of women, they're, just, they're repulsed by dudes who do illegal shit. Y'all just look at the money. But I'm, I'm, no, he, no, I'm like, there's supposed to be a difference. You know, the guy who's an accountant versus the guy who's a drug dealer, he's like, well, fuck it. It's all the same. Well, no, nah, it really ain't. It's not entrepreneurs. One's illegal, one's legal. Um, one can has a future and one doesn't. That's so, true. Let's get to the. Let's just assume that you are what you say you are. Why can't you date the corporate bankers and the finance guys and the lawyers and the the cardiologists? Why can't you get those guys? Take notice of this woman's significant ego whenever Kevin poses a question. It's disheartening to witness the extent of delusion apparent in some modern women. Despite Kevin's attempts to engage in constructive dialogue, her ego seems to hinder genuine introspection. Kevin Samuels often facilitates discussions aimed at fostering self-awareness and personal growth. However, encounters like this highlight the challenges in addressing deeply ingrained attitudes and perceptions, recognizing and addressing ego-driven behaviors is essential for meaningful progress. It's a reminder of the importance of humility and open-mindedness in navigating conversations about modern relationships. Kevin's efforts to prompt reflection and honesty in his discussions serve as a valuable opportunity for individuals to confront their egos and strive for more authentic connections. I do run into those guys, and my, right now I'm finding synergy. I'm having a problem just having this energy where I'm attracted to the work ethic and what they have going on, but on a personal level, it, it's not clicking. Yeah, it's still, I ask you why you can't get them, not why they don't qualify for you. 
I get them. It just no, 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 no. See, turned one, off. one of the big disconnects is you keep talking about men that don't qualify for you. I'm talking about the men you want. Why can't you get them? Because they exist. But I see what you're saying now. Yeah. Right. I don't have time to go out and. Well, if you got time to deal with men who don't qualify for you, you have time to deal with men who do. Been, who you do? Hold on, man. Hold on, let's be real. If you got time to date drug dealers and dudes that are off on synergy, that's time. Time doesn't care where you put it. Why not put it with the caliber of men you want? The question is, can you get their attention? I sure can. And what I'm saying. Right. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Then if you can, make it make sense. Why are you choosing to not deal with these guys and you're dealing with these guys? Right now, I'm not dealing with anybody because I was. That's not what I asked. I asked not what I asked because you said. Why you, you, said, you, said, you said well, because I'm running my show and I'm going to do it. If it's a problem, you can leave. But how can you understand? Because I'm running my show and I'm directing this conversation. I'm trying to get to the root of something because you're not answering my question. Now you're starting to deflect. I just simply asked you, man, because you're making it seem like the guys aren't on your level, and that's the issue. Granted. But there are men that you want. The men are above your level. I asked you, why can't you get with these men? And you said, because of time. And I said, well, if you got time to deal with guys that aren't on your level, you can put that time into men that are on your level. And what I did tell you is right now I've been on a hiatus because I was able to notice that. And now I don't have time for anything, even the latter mm -hmm. on both sides of the spectrum. So when you get to be 60 years old on this bad bitch boss energy, what is your social, what is your familial and social life look like? Right now, I don't really have much of a social life. No, no, when, you be, when you're 60. Fast forward to 60 years old, what does it look like? I'm considering I'll probably have to buy my husband or just buy my fun at that time and just enjoy Buy life. your what? Buy your fun? That's <laughs> it. Because that's what tends to happen. Women who stay on this track end up alone and they got to buy men. As long as so, you know what's coming up with it. Yes. As long as you know what comes up with it, that that's what you end up with. You end up with subpar men. So the question still is, is the payoff worth that? Right now, so I find the time. No, no, no. Meaning, whatever you're doing right now, you know, are you making are you making enough money to make it worthwhile to live this life of subpar men, and in the future having to buy substandard men? I mean, are you making millions? No. Are you yeah. making hundreds and hundreds of thousands? Yes. Yep. As long as you're happy with it. Because how would they, you recommend I find that man? They don't want you. They don't want boss bitches. At this pivotal moment, Kevin facilitates an opportunity for her to confront the truth. However, despite the clarity of the reality presented, her ego appears to be a formidable barrier, preventing her from fully embracing it. Kevin Samuels often guides discussions towards self-awareness and personal growth, but encountering such resistance underscores the challenges inherent in addressing deeply ingrained attitudes. Confronting one's ego can be a daunting task, yet essential for genuine progress. This interaction action serves as a reminder of the importance of humility and open-mindedness in navigating conversations about modern relationships. Kevin's efforts to prompt reflection and honesty provide individuals with a valuable opportunity to confront their egos and strive for more authentic connections. They don't want none of this stuff. They want women who know how to work with a man. They want women who are agreeable. They want women who understand how to support. You, you, you're like... You know, guys like that will work with you if there's money in it. Some of them may even decide to sleep with you, but no, no, they want women who are completely opposite. Because to be a boss bitch, the word is bitch is disagreeable by nature. Well, I don't bad, boss but bitch. Men don't, men, men don't want disagreeable women. Or women who are, and this is another word that we continue to use. 
We keep saying men don't want masculine women, but we really need to say men don't want aggressive women. So aggressive. the men, the men that are up there, they you want uh, cooperative, agreeable, feminine women. That's the only way to get those men's attention. Well, what in the times that we live in, we have so many women who have to work for self, take care of self. So you have no room left but to be a boss. Baby. Yeah, I'm going to destroy that whole argument tomorrow night. That's bullshit. I'm going to just I'm going to completely destroy that. We have to the argument. I said it Monday night. I'm going to completely obliterate that bullshit. It's a choice you all make. So I, it, is a, it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. You decide to go down a role of being an independent, competitive woman and then lament the fact that you have to be independent and compete. Whereas women who choose to prioritize relationship, family, higher than being money, those two women are existing. That's how the Hispanic community has supplanted the black community in under 50 years because they prioritize family over business and they got more business and family than we do in less than 50 years. You're right. So uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tune in. Tomorrow, tune in. Because you just gave me the perfect lead. I'm going to completely destroy this with facts because you don't have to. You were told that this is what you should do to go out and put career, job first then when that's done go out and get a man but what if you're a woman a single woman living in new york with no family and no support and all you're doing is working for self i can't i don't have time to sit there and what's be the a question press. if you're a single woman living in new york okay uh what did your mother raise you to be a wife no, my mother had me at 14. Okay, well, then that's probably part of the reason why you're a single woman living in New York. Leave New York. You don't have to live in New York. You ask, let's see, you don't see the question. You ask the question. First, I ask, were you raised to be a wife? The answer is no. Okay, fine. So you're already dealing with the femininity and an agreeableness deficit. Then you're in a rough and tumbled city. I tell you to leave New York to go where the, the cost of living may be lower and it's not as aggressive, but you don't want to. And that's part of the problem. What are you willing to give up to get what it is you want? I would have to give up money to leave New York. What, do you, what is money? What is money? Life, freedom. That's bullshit. Money is a tool. You, you can't hug money. COVID should have told you one thing. Money didn't go get water and toilet paper for you. That's what the pan. That's why this show exists right now. So many of you so-called money chicks ain't really getting no real money. You getting you getting more than minimum wage, but you ain't getting millions. I'm making way more than minimum wage. Well, you're in New York too, so it's also two hundred forty-five percent of the cost of living. So, due respect, the average black woman in this country, seventy-four percent of black women earn less than fifty thousand dollars. I seem to get a show where I'm attracting all of the black women in general, black women in particular, who are entrepreneurs making six figures. I call bullshit on most of it. And here's the net net of it. Why does that not preclude, uh, why does that not prohibit other accomplished, entrepreneurial, working, educated women from, of other races from getting me? I, I, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Uh, I I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear, you. I hear, you. I hear, you. I hear you. Well, you may, but the CEO of Pepsi, when she went home to submit to her husband, the women every day who have more women. education make more money who still have families and have, have traditional relationships. Go ahead. Most of those women, before they even became into the roles of power that they have with the families they have, a lot of their prospects, their they found in high school or childhood friends and friends. That's how so they you were not around men in high school? Yeah, of course I was and my child. So you had so you were around excuse me, excuse me. So you were excuse me, you were around prospects. You just weren't taught how to fish for them. So my prospect passed away. Ma'am, you just said you weren't taught how to be a wife. That's the difference. 
You were taught to be independent. That still doesn't make me in the sense that I can't learn or be a wife, period. You ask the question, ma'am. Don't get up. Okay, this is one thing that trips me out with you ladies. You ask the question and I'm like, give me the answer. So I'm supposed to be, you're supposed to accept the fact that you are in a deficit. You may be, are you as accomplished in your personal life as in your professional life? At this juncture, it's evident that she has reached a moment of defeat wherein she wholeheartedly accepts the reality conveyed by Kevin regarding the concept of being a boss bitch. This pivotal moment marks her surrender to the truth, signifying a significant shift in her perspective. Kevin Samuel's discussions often prompt individuals to confront uncomfortable truths and reassess their beliefs. Witnessing her full embrace of this reality highlights the transformative power of his insights. This instance serves as a reminder of the the importance of humility and openness to new perspectives. Embracing the truth, even when it challenges preconceived notions, can lead to personal growth and a deeper understanding of oneself. Kevin's ability to facilitate such realizations underscores the value of honest and candid conversations about modern life and relationships. It's encouraging to see individuals like her embracing the reality presented and potentially using it as a catalyst for positive change. Yeah. Then fix it. Check your ego, check your attitude, understand, you need summer school for me. You need remedial man. You flunked husband. Get a tutor, take some of that money you making and put it into relationships because you can't fuck your checking account. You can't make babies with your 401k. And your insurance and your investment accounts ain't going to change your diaper or give you your insulin or put your teeth in when you're 72. So how, how do you women seem to recognize that family matters and men matter more than just an orgasm? That's a fact. And I'm not one <laughs> who, don't, who don't feel like I necessarily need to make The problem is the original sin here is baby boomers and Generation X women didn't teach their daughters how to be wives. They taught you how to be independent, which is really to be a man. Well, I was a man in the house growing up. That's unfortunate. Blame your mama. 